With over 20 trips to Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras, I'm determined to show another narrative. There's much more to Central America than what's on the nightly news cycle. These are my stories from the Northern Triangle. Hi everyone, I'm Ron Podmore and welcome to the Northern Triangle. And should I say aloha? Except this time, it's not Hawaii. We're exploring everything but El Salvador. Come along with me. Let's see what we can discover with this beautiful country. everything in this compact but very diverse and vibrant country of El Salvador. From its Playa de El Tunco on the coast of El Salvador to the Metropolitan Cathedral in its capital city of San Salvador over to a very active volcano, that of Santa Ana, there's much to do in this very small country. So our flight takes us straight to the expanding and recently renovated San Salvador Airport. With our rental car, we will head 45 minutes north to the capital city to explore new restaurants, discover hidden monuments, and learn about the Salvadoran Civil War. From there, we will head out of the city, learn about the Mayan National Park called Tazmo, which utilized gold, and from there, venture over to see what's bubbling at the Santa Ana Volcano. Finally, we will turn and drive south to the coastal region of La Libertad, where we can relax and enjoy the beach cities of El Tanco and El Zante. Much like its counterpart country to the north, that of Guatemala, El Salvador has a few surprises. With a population just over 6 million, El Salvador is roughly the size of the American state of New Jersey. Although poverty is prevalent here, people also appear to have a place to call home each night. You won't see overt displays of homelessness, destitution, or drug use. The nation's welcoming approach for tourists during the second year of the COVID pandemic helped this country financially weather the crisis. During this time, the country offered carefree travel without so much as a negative COVID test result or a vaccination status. The only requirement was to pay a small fee at the immigration department upon arrival, a visa fee. Masks, however, were still required. I discovered not only the highly sought after tortilla filled meal called the pupusa, but also where American dollar coins seem to migrate. Both are everywhere. El Salvador is a bit like its neighbor to the north, Guatemala. Both are undergoing rapid change, becoming very attractive to tourists, expatriates, investors, and now crypto nomads interested in spending their newly minted Bitcoin currency. Exploring the best of everything with San Salvador. With the cuisine, culture, and friendly faces everywhere, there's something for everyone. We're starting with the Monument to the World. Here at the Monument to the Divine Savior of the World, this 58 foot tall memorial is a centralized landmark that is recognized by citizens and tourists alike. The monument was built on a pedestal originally used to decorate the tomb of a former president, that of Manuel Enrique Arujo, the president of El Salvador from 1911 to 1913. It is often a starting point for many parades that celebrate Christian holidays and Salvadoran unifying events, parades, and all that life has to offer. Today, after a significant earthquake destroyed a large portion of this monument, it was eventually rebuilt in 2010 and renamed Plaza Salvador del Mundo. And all this is set against the backdrop of the capital city of San Salvador and of its namesake volcano. The city is surrounded by its share of those who live impoverished lives, as well as many who live in the affluent suburbs, complete with restaurants and large shopping malls. Peaceful settings such as the botanic gardens that surround the city provide a break from the city's hectic pace. 
less than three miles from the monument to the world right here in Barrios de Central or the neighborhood center is where you have the National Palace, the Metropolitan Cathedral, and of course the namesake statue of President Gerardo Barrios that served in 1859 to 1863 as a unifying country of all of those Central American countries. That is why today many of the flags have a stripe at the top and the bottom and if they're all lined up you will see that we're once all connected. The statue is placed on a pedestal of granite that shows the battle scenes cast in bronze in a coat of arms of El Salvador. President Barrios was instrumental in the short-lived concept of unifying all of Central American countries of El Salvador, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and Honduras under a singular unifying country. It existed from 1823 to 1841. The plaza is where all celebrations begin and end, including the newest president, that of Bukile, in 2020. His inauguration proceeded right here in this plaza. Riding a populist wave to eradicate crime and murders, the president of El Salvador dedicated his unifying speech and even shared a portion of it in the El Salvadoran sign language to reflect all of its citizens. Since he was National Palace celebrating its 200th anniversary right here in Barrios de Central or the Central neighborhood in San Salvador. You have to recognize that this country is rapidly diversifying. In 2001, the economy swapped over to the United States dollar. And with that, everything is exchanged in the currency based on the American dollar. More recently, in 2021, El Salvador became the first country in the world to recognize the growing trend associated with that of the Bitcoin currency. Who knows where this country is going? But I can pretty much assure you one thing, and that is, it is going up. San Salvador there are two huge museums the first one the anthropological museum that houses a lot of the Mayan artifacts that have been excavated and restored and preserved the museum we're looking at today is that of the museum Marte which houses over 6,000 feet of contemporary historic art that showcases everything Salvadorians this museum opened in 2003 and has three main exhibits that really illustrate the best of modern art right here in San Salvador the Marte Museum houses a great outdoor collection of art dedicated to contemporary design. Set in the heart of the city and not far from the Presidential Palace, the Museum of Art of El Salvador goes by the acronym of Marte. The Marte Museum's most impressive artwork is the tiled Mosaic Monument of the Revolution, which is a national landmark in the country. So much that when the new museum opened up in 2005, it was designed around this impressive tiled artwork. In addition to the extensive outdoor collection, the museum houses artwork detailing the experiences of those who lived during the El Salvadoran Civil War. The Salvadoran Civil War occurred from 1979 to 1992, lasting roughly 13 years. For comparison, the Guatemalan Civil War ran for a much longer period starting in 1960, ending in 1996, roughly 36 years later. The two were very different civil wars, each with their own rationale for war, resolution, and pending judicial accountability. At the Marty Museum, there are acrylics, oils, and life-size bronze statues that serve as a reminder of the Salvadoran Civil War. If one is into contemporary art, the Marty Museum will definitely satisfy that thirst. Perched high on a bluff overlooking the city of San Salvador is the appropriately named Vista Municipal Lookout of the capital city. The compactness of this city, it's extremely small compared to that of its neighbor four hours to the west of Guatemala City. San Salvador's population is only 290,000 people. You compare that with metropolitan Guatemala City that has over three million inhabitants. The beauty of this city lies in its culture, its nightlife, its museums, and of course the compactness of everything that San Salvador has to offer. Eighty miles to the northwest of San Salvador lies the Tazumo National Archaeological Park. 
it's not very big compared to that of some of his other nearby counterparts five and a half hours inside the Guatemala border at Tikal or at Yacha National Park. What Tazmal offers here is the first evidence of that of jade, obsidian, and gold. Trying to put these pieces together and where they all come from is the magic right here that Tazmal has to offer. As is the case of many Mayan city-state civilization, these sites are well known to the local indigenous populations, but they remain in remarkably well-preserved condition from hundreds of years of organic matter that enshrined these temples in a protective layer. Through the work of Stanley Boggs, an archaeologist who studied at Harvard and later the University of Arizona, he was instrumental in photographing and preserving several of these Mayan sites for future excavation, ranging from Chichen Itza in the Mexican Yucatan Peninsula to Central America's Tazmo in the 40s and the 50s. One has to use your imagination a little bit and discover that when this site here was rediscovered back in the 40s and the 50s, this is not what it looked like. You have to imagine trees, canopy growth, grasses, multiple generations, hundreds and hundreds of years. It really was what looked like a small mound. So this had all been excavated and restored and most importantly, preserved for future generations. Archaeological investigations indicate that Tazima was inhabited from the Classic period through to the post-Classic and that the site has links as far afield as central Mexico, the northern Yucatan Peninsula, and the lower Central America. Metal artifacts from the complex date to the 8th century AD and are among the earliest metal artifacts reported from Mesoamerica. What makes this particular complex unusual is that Tazima faces to the west. Tazumal had important trade with that of the Guatemalan Mayan metropolis Camino Huju, which is only located 75 miles to the west here in modern-day Guatemala City. Many of the ruins here remain covered in earth, but there are two significant structures, titled B1 and B2, that were excavated, restored, and also include the ball court, which is a precursor to what we know as our modern-day stadiums. The ball court housed the sport of pits. This extreme game was played with a heavy rubberized ball. Two teams composed of two to four players each. They could use all parts of their body, just not their hands, to participate in fend-off challenges. Loosely translated, the game operated much like volleyball, but without a net. The Mayan, Olmec, and Aztec societies had participated in this game. Even Mayan kings participated in it as an alternative to warfare. However, so extreme was the game at times that losing also resulted in losing one's life. This game played here at Tasmo is based upon the evidence and external appearance of two unexcavated mounds that are situated in the northwestern portion of the site within a 20th century modern cemetery that borders the archaeological park. Life during the height of the Tasmo civilization was based on agriculture and was complex. The Mayans in general contributed to the world by cultivating the cocoa bean used for making of unsweetened chocolate. Only after cocoa's arrival into Europe in the 16th century was sugar added to it and it became popular throughout society, first among the ruling classes of the kings and queens and then among the common people. The Mayans were also accomplished mathematicians and astronomers who tracked the known planets with great precision despite having no telescopes. In general, the Mayans communicated and traded with many other cultures. Their merchants had very significant outreach from all the way in South America to points much closer to home such as Mexico, the Caribbean, and even some evidence to suggest Florida as well. Elaborate religious rites included skull elongation and crossed eyes of infants were common, although here at Tasmo there is very little evidence to suggest that such was the case. The practice, however, suggested that these individuals were held in high esteem. In the shade, it's extremely hot. 
I could spend an hour, hour and a half here exploring what the Tazimu complex has to offer. You do need lots of suntan lotion and you do need a water bottle. This is not one of the more uh, populated tourist centers, but it is one in which sometimes there might be five or six other people here. And with that, everyone has their park to themselves. What a great opportunity to enjoy an experience like that. Listen to Leaving the town of Chalchuapa, where Tasmo Archaeological Park is located, we started our drive, headed to the south, climbing up and over mountain ranges with a stop here at the Santa Ana Volcanic National Park. El Salvador is the only Central American country to not have a Caribbean coastline and is known for exceptional geothermal, volcanic, and seismic activity, including right here at the Santa Ana Volcano. With an eye towards the future applications of geothermal energy, plans are being made to tap into this growing source of electricity and mining of Bitcoin currency just a few hours away from the Santa Ana Volcano, located in the southern portion of El Salvador in the small municipality of La Union. The Santa Ana Volcano offers great hiking, a pleasant window on the world, and plenty of opportunities to experience many different microclimates within the park. When done, there is a great restaurant that serves delightful cuisine, all with the view overlooking both the volcano and the valley below. Once I completed my hike around the perimeter, I enjoyed a refreshing strawberry smoothie. From clear cascading waterfalls, enormous freshwater lakes, and vast sugarcane fields that dot the picturesque villages, one can get around quite pleasantly with the rental car. It is best to travel these roads during the day, not so much because of safety, but because you're hugging the mountainous terrain with very little room for driver error. As I sped past the scenery, friendly locals would occasionally wave. I felt free to wave back to them. As is the case with many Central American countries, there is an abundance of extended mountain ranges that makes for impressive viewing. With plenty of sunshine, every few miles offers a picture-perfect moment, ranging from lakes to locals enjoying a refreshing dip to quiet villages nestled in between the mountain ranges. opportunity to see this particular bluff that overlooks all of the beach communities here on the coast of El Salvador. This Camino or this new highway was inaugurated recently and it's called Surf City Camino El Rio which is very fitting apt. The highways here are gorgeous brand new and they certainly serve a vital connecting point for all of the tourists from San Salvador Airport down to the beaches here. While overlooking this beautiful vista I got to thinking I can't help but see evidence everywhere of the People's Republic of China presenting itself to El Salvador for enhanced trade, dialogue, and cultural exchanges. In 2019, President Bukele met with the American President Donald Trump to reinforce its special relationship between the two countries, one that includes remittances. But not long after, Bukele was invited to China. And during those meetings, memos of understanding created initial opportunities for both countries, including an outright grant from China to El Salvador that totaled 500 million U.S. dollars. The opportunity opened up for China to send exports to El Salvador. In exchange, that 500 million U.S. dollars included an opportunity to build a new library and a sports stadium in San Salvador. Although trade balances are slightly askew between the two countries at the moment, the hope is that more Salvadoran products can be introduced and exported to its Chinese counterparts. Ideally, it would be best served if other G7 countries took a look at what the Northern Triangle has to offer. As it is, much like the adoption of the Bitcoin currency, El Salvador is the first to reduce the recognition of Taiwan in exchange for enhanced multilateral trade and future cooperation with the People's Republic of China or the PRC. For the past few years, the new president has made significant strides in reducing violent gang-on-gang -gang killings in the areas surrounding the capital city, albeit a few setbacks that tested President Bukele in March of 2022. These murders tested the administration's commitment to continuously reducing the murder rates and improving safety. 
with the larger picture of steady year-over-year -year decrease in violence, more infrastructure development is quickly leading to additional jobs. Along the Pacific Coast surf city communities, economic activity is noticeable and changing with each passing month. What is arguably becoming Central America's newest hip destination is right here in Surf City. You won't find a surf city on the map of El Salvador, as rather it's a moniker used to describe all the coastal communities that parallel the Pacific Coast. If the road to El Salvador's future economic success is paved with that of Bitcoin and tourism, then its beaches are the bread and butter for future collection of taxes. Everything tourism that the American state of Hawaii or Mexico or the Caribbean offer, so too does El Salvador. With very competitive price points, there is nothing like a vacation that offers good value for the money and not returning home being fearful of a pending credit card statement. Luxurious condominiums and resort back in the future and are beginning to sprout. Land development is quickly being sold to international investors and infrastructure taking place for future commercial developments beyond that of four-star hotels that are clean and free of beach sand. I envision a sort of a newly designed golden trail, a four-lane arterial that connects the surf city beach communities to La Libertad, from there to the airport, and from the airport northward to the capital city of San Salvador. And on either side of these grand highways will be an assortment of services, restaurants, and stores that offer name brand recognition. Will the fortunes made from tourism reach all of El Salvador society? Obviously not. Will there be a segment of society that doesn't get to participate in the windfalls that these funds generate? More than likely, no. And I'm not putting down El Salvador or any other Northern Triangle country for that matter. Far from it. I've seen it in my own country how the market economy shines freely on those willing to take the risks. Increasingly, the odds favor success in the business enterprise. I've also seen how if one doesn't offer an exchangeable value, whether it be intrinsic in nature, human capital, and or infrastructure, then they too shall be discarded, much like a soggy, used pandemic mask. Will the enhanced tax collections reach the capital city and be applied for future infrastructure development in the areas not on that golden trail? Again, maybe, maybe not. It's too early to tell how the story of El Salvador's grand experiment with Bitcoin and with tourism will turn out. But from what I've seen, the country is mounting a very effective approach to how they want to be viewed in the 21st century, and all evidence suggests that the attitudes will change in the affirmative. Meanwhile, further to the south of Surf City lies the small geothermal region of La Union on the Gulf of Fonseca. A short ferry ride takes visitors to both Honduras and Nicaragua. Working with private contractors, if El Salvador is able to harvest both sustainable electricity and Bitcoin using the region's geothermal energy, then El Salvador can now add to its list of items they can export, aside from agriculture-related products. While taking a break from filming, I got a chance to savor the warm Pacific Ocean water and the black sand beaches. Every few miles, the beach and the wave composition changes. Figuring out the diversifying economy, I'll admit I don't understand the function of cryptocurrency, but I do know the application of it reaching to its citizens here that don't have access to traditional banking. By some estimates, almost half of the financial transactions here in this region are crypto-based. That means more money in the hands of locally owned hotel chains and ideally hiring of more employees. However, if El Salvador's experience with the People's Republic of China and now new emerging commerce dialogue with the country of Turkey are any indicators, growth will only continue and new enhanced ties will be forged. I suspect that when compared to the United States, El Salvador may find the doors of commerce and trade could lie elsewhere. The United States' ability to deliver on its old promises will have an outsized impact for not only El Salvador, but that of the Northern Triangle neighbors. That doesn't bode well if past American history is any indicator. Meanwhile, El Salvador has been approached by China to consider an agreement in regards to its Belt and Road Initiative endeavors. 
The importance of these decisions reaches far beyond governmental trade, commerce, and diplomacy. It reaches to the heart of the El Salvadoran people and who they wish to align themselves with in the future. El Salvador's model of God, union, and liberty is a cohesive example that unites all citizens as they strive for prosperity and to enhance the national economy by thinking outside the box. As a nation, I'm left with the impression they're determined to emerge from the pandemic with a unique sense of direction. After all, El Salvador is a country that no longer wants to be boxed in. In this very compact country of El Salvador, ranging from its cosmopolitan capital and award-winning restaurants right smack in the downtown core of San Salvador. Within a few hours drive, you'll find yourself anywhere from the very active Santa Ana volcano to that of the Tazimo Mayan ruins and the empire that served during the pre-classic and the post-classic period of the Mayan empire. Heading to the southwest, not far from the International San Salvador Airport, there's the El Tunco Beach in the La Libertad Department of El Salvador with its very active nightlife and growing scene. I'm Ron Podmore. Travel with purpose. Explore more of the best of Central America. I'll see you next time.